Fly a fair nation. Fly a fair nation. Thank you for tuning into the Pointless Talks podcast. This evening we're sitting down for an interview, and as usual, when I have guests, I usually let them introduce themselves because you know you're not entitled to use your name. I don't know if you want to just tell them whatever so they know who I'm talking to when I'm asking questions. So right, my name is Anthony, aka Finesse. Yes. All right. I know you in real life, but I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions I already know the answers to because people don't know you. So if I'm asking you questions that you know I know the answers to, don't cuss me. Just, oh, no. you know. <laughs> All right. So, you know, this podcast is about being LGBTQ in Caribbean. So you're Caribbean, correct? That is correct. Okay. Where are you from? My parents are from Trinidad. Okay. So that means you were born here? American Trinidad. Yeah. Ah. Where were you born? Florida? The Bronx. The Bronx. Okay. All right. Um, do you visit Trinidad often? I've been uh, once. Um, my mother wouldn't let me go when I was younger because she thought that my dad was going to keep me there and have some other child come up. Oh. So I haven't been since. I, I haven't gone until I was an adult. Okay. Okay. So you've never been to Carnival there or anything? No, nah, no. Nah, yeah. We tried to go last year, but tickets be mad expensive. Yes. So we ain't make that happen. Okay, how in touch are you with your roots as far as like being Trini goes? Like, you eat the food, you listen to yeah. music. Yeah, I, I do all that. I, you would think that I'm probably Trini if you <laughs> like. You would think I was born there. Okay, okay. So you down with the curry, the roti, the yeah, pilau? Yeah, what you mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, is it a large Trini population in the Bronx? Um, you know, most of the West Indians are in Brooklyn. I know. That's what I'm asking. So, I, I, mean, I lived in Brooklyn, so I know, but the, I don't know much about the Bronx. The Bronx, I mean, you might find a couple here and there, but, you know, most of them, like, if you know anything, they from Brooklyn. Everybody's from Brooklyn. Okay. So, you, <laughs> you might find a little Cardi B out there, but, you know, that's okay. about it. All right. Um, it's a topic that I've been hearing lately, and I think it's funny, but I realize a lot of Trini people, well, people from Trinidad and Tobago, they prefer for you to refer to it as the whole name Trinidad and Tobago. Does that bother you? I mean, I don't care. As long okay. as you just, just like, you acknowledge what the name it is period okay. like, just don't call it no crazy name <laughs> well okay. you know people they kind of like confuse jamaicans and chinese also i don't so. understand that but okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay um all right so are you part of the lgbtq community very i'm very happy about it <laughs> what letter do you identify as i am a b which is the bottom <laughs> 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 I was gonna get to that. <laughs> it's like are you top, you bottom, you nah, burst. There ain't no tops around here. It's, nah, nah, nah. Okay. Um, are you out? Um, yes, I am. I came out when I was 18 years old. Oh, okay. Do you, to your parents or just well, friends? Well, um, my friends found out first, and then my parents they. <laughs> That's a story all within itself, my parents. <laughs> the way they found out, they knew since day one because I would get caught doing little things like oh. to pictures. And I'm an old school head, so BGC, if those oh, who know wow. about it, and all that other good stuff. So, you know, it, it just. Yeah, it's a story behind. Did that. you sit down and have a talk with them? Share the story. I mean, <laughs> if you don't mind. Like, I mean, I, I haven't sat down and actually told. I mean, I did eventually that after a few after a few, but um, when it first happened, I didn't talk to them about it. I kind of was outed by a cousin. Oh wow! And at the time, I was dating a guy who was in the military, and oh. he would send me letters and whatnot. My senior year, we mm -hmm. was together all my senior year, and then um, she would go to my mail. Like she was from train at also but okay. she was like she had papers so she was at a travel when she oh, wanted okay. to she came out to visit for a little minute and she had a crush on me so like you a cousin but you're not blood uh, she's my okay, one of those yeah, type of yeah. things okay so she um she would go through my mail and she would she saw i had notes from him uh -huh. and she went to my parents like yo he's talking to somebody in iraq right now and you know just Sis. yeah yeah come to find out this broke bitch is now gay too wow and she's a crackhead <laughs> <laughs> well damn were your parents upset when they found out my pops was we used to argue all the time we argued we argued we argued my stepmom she didn't care like she was like you know you're my son i love mm -hmm. you no matter what um my grandmother found out i was like damn but she didn't care like her favorite so okay. she didn't care about that <laughs> but um it was a, it was a big thing which was one of the reasons why i left miami because my parents oh, okay Okay, but like the argument, what was it necessarily about? Like my dad just—he's—he's he's an old school trainee. He, mm -hmm. he he feels as if a man should be a man, and I ain't gonna lie. At that time, I didn't know how to be a gay man. I—I I, okay. I was growing up in Miami. Well, I was growing up in high school in Miami, so you know the lifestyle here and lifestyle anywhere else is a little different. Mm -hmm. When you're gay, a lot of the men here are flamboyant. You know, mm -hmm. They wear jewelry, they get their mm -hmm. hair done, X, Y, Z, and. Mm -hmm. I thought that's what being gay was. Uh -huh. So I was walking around with like jewelry on my hand, just being mad crazy. <laughs> yeah, because I remember you used to like Juicy Couture. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought I was like, you know what I mean? But now 
I moved back to New York and I had to kind of like realize that that's not me. Okay. And you don't have to be that way to be considered gay. Yes. So you okay. can still be a man. That's actually one of the topics I wanted to talk to you about because I know that you are a bottom and you're not one of the flamboyant right. bottoms because most people, when they think of gays or bottoms, like even gay men in general, because they always feel like they can tell a gay man by looking at them. And I'm like, sis, not always. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like some of these niggas will fool you. Like, you might be like, oh, he fine. And be like, oh, he looking at your boyfriend. Calm and down. those niggas that I like just play it out there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, and even with that, like, bottoms, they always think, you know, they dress up and they wear, like, you know, the makeup yeah. and they have their purses and yeah, their heels yeah. and lip gloss and all that. But you, you know what I'm saying? You in here with your fitted on yeah. and you're know saying you chilling in fitting clothes, but you're not, like, it's you not don't, tight. quote unquote, look gay. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Do you get that a lot, though? I do. Um, a lot of people ask me, like, are you are you sure you're gay? Um, <laughs> what if I can turn you out? Like, you just need oh, some good gosh. pussy, you be good. You know, and, and my thing is, I've never slept with a girl before. Okay. And I don't see myself ever doing it. Okay. Um, not even to appease anybody else mm-hmm. and what they may feel. I feel like just because I'm gay does not mean that I have to play the role okay. of a stereotypical mm-hmm. gay man. I just like that as like men. That's all. That's crazy to me because you always hear from the lesbian standpoint how guys are always like, oh, I could turn you out. You just ain't had no good dick. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and it's like, damn, bitches be doing that shit too. <laughs> That is so crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah. and I, you know what I'm saying? Because we talk about the Me Too movement and everything too. Right. We talk about how, you know, a lot of women are victims and they speak out about it. Right. And how men speak out about it and they're like, what? Guys, guys don't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, guys don't yeah. get raped. Guys don't get, and it's like, Shit. it's the same thing. And <laughs> I just love the fact that you said that before I even got to that point because yeah. I know. I have other gay male friends who tell me how, like, you know, girls hit on them yeah. and stuff. But it's not, like, to the point where it's, like, you know, I can turn you straight type thing. It's more like, oh, my God, you're so I cute. Love you Are you short? Yeah yeah, 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 one of those type of things. Yeah. I get that so. a lot. I, um, I got that last night, actually. We, went to a, we was on the beach, and we went to this club, and we just lit. Mm-hmm. And this girl, like... I turn into a straight man when it comes to West Indian parties. West Indian music, soak, anything, I oh, turn into a straight man. we're getting there. <laughs> like, I just dance with females as uh-huh. if, like, it's with whatever. But I I can't see myself doing that with a man. Like, it's just... Really? Like, I want to whine. I want to have a good... I, I might whine on him, but uh-huh. I want to have that, you know... Yeah. Okay, so when you go to these West Indian parties that right. are heterosexual, um, <laughs> and you're dancing with women, they're dancing on you or are you dancing on them? Like, if, either I'm, or? if I'm too drunk, I'm probably they're probably dancing on me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, if I'm in my right side of mind, I'm going to dance on them. Okay, okay. But <laughs> would you not want that, like, let's say, a gay Caribbean party? Like, would you- I would love that. I, I, I mean, I heard we just had one in Miami not too long oh, ago. Oh, yeah, there's a few. I wish I was there for my friends told me about it. But, we have um, another one coming up on April 27th. I'm, I'm promoting on. for people. Hey, <laughs> I might be out for that. I might buy a ticket for that. But okay. um, I would, you know, I, I, like we have gay pride in New York. You know, we have yeah. our, we have our own um section. Yeah, we've linked up at yeah, you know yeah. Chutney Pride. Right, and I stay I'm in contact with them all the time. Like they mm-hmm. have little things coming up. Like I would love for us to be able to have our own type of yeah. West Indian, quote unquote, heterosexual. Or, yeah, you know, we got Juve. Yeah. And but, th- that's that's one of the things I talk about a lot with the podcast too, because you know you listen to podcasts. There's a bunch of gay podcasts out there. There's a few gay ones where it's like. You're Caribbean and you're gay or whatever right. letter you identify as. Like you always have to choose one or the other. It's never yeah. like I'm this whole person yeah. in this setting. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So that's yeah. why I'm asking this question because I know me personally. Like I love to fet. I love right. dancehall. I love soca, right. carnival, all of that. Like I live for it. Right. But I also love to, to be around gay thing. people. Yeah, I personally right. don't want to be bothered by men when I go out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? Like like I went to one of the um, team dutty parties or right. whatever. I met this gay boy and he was so cute and I was just like bitch yes and he just dancing on me the whole night and I was like yes boo it's like you're my best friend like hey you know what I'm saying and that's great because I don't feel no like obligation right. to you after this right. you know what I'm saying like, go home it's nothing exactly and, I mean at times I feel a little uncomfortable because I can't be me in that party mm-hmm. I have to be what they perceive yeah. me as Yeah. but at the same time it's like I really don't I don't know if I would see myself being the one bent up in the corner with somebody <laughs> behind me like that. Like okay. it's cool, it's cool for like every now and then, but mm-hmm. all night, nah. Let me get yeah. my little brother too. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel know. you. I mean. I, I think about that and I don't know if you heard but you know recently Trinidad passed a law against yeah. the buggery law or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. how did that make you feel as a Trini man like I mean, as a gay Trini it, man it's, it's, it's nice to know that times are changing mm-hmm. and that you can actually go to Trinidad now and and not be looked at like some okay. kind of strange mm-hmm. creature but at the same token 
I myself still would not go out there <laughs> and act the fool because I'm not about to get my, my head chopped off. Yes. Like, I, there's still those ignorant mm-hmm. people out there that will still fight you and yeah. kill you because of what you do. Exactly. And I don't want you part of that. Exactly. And that's one of the things I talk about with Jamaica also because, you know, they have their own sector and they have their own set of events and organizations created to LGBTQ community in Jamaica. Right. And I'm always like, I love this. I love that this is happening in Jamaica on the forefront. Like, this is happening. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm Jamaican. Yeah. I know Jamaicans. Right. I know you how know we are. Happens, exactly. I know Caribbeans as a whole. And there's some Caribbeans who are more open minded and aren't yeah. as, you know, Close-minded violent or ignorant. ignorant. Yeah. Exactly. So, of course, you know, I don't have to worry too much about those. But sadly, the mass um, majority is not that open yet right. it's not it's not to that level so i heard about that and i was like yo good shit shout yeah. out to trinidad and tobago yeah. you know whatever i had a little post and everything and i was like go them but at the same time i'm like that is from a legal standpoint yeah there's still there's still that street standpoint. exactly and it's still real life yeah. exactly yeah. so you know what i'm saying like i see that and i'm like that is good for the standpoint of you won't get arrested yeah you know what i'm saying but you're supposed to be your ass beat though <laughs> exactly <laughs> but then my thing to the next level is how you know because just because it's a law doesn't mean that the police officers or whoever are going to obey by it yeah exactly it's what it is what because it is. let's say they're ignorant they have their own mindset with things exactly so let's say you as a gay man you get abused by someone because of that and you call the police they might not even care about that because they have that mindset like okay you're not going to get arrested for this right. but if he beat your ass that's your problem that's it. and i feel like even if like because the gay agenda manifesto um talks about passing the law to right. you know ban that also in jamaica and i'm like okay if this law passes and it's no longer illegal or whatever i worry about the same thing in jamaica because like how many people break laws exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying right, right. so it's like that That to me is just like I like that the government is doing something about it yeah. but, but they can't control the people exactly they're supposed to be able they to can. but <laughs> you, you can't control a West Indian period like, especially someone who is old school and filled with hate yes so, and a lot of them are still filled with hate exactly it's ignorance but I mean like I said it's coming we're growing yeah. you know what I'm saying we're, we're coming along we're coming yes. along from where we were before very that's true that's a good look but exactly it's, it's gonna take a lot more yeah I mean my thing with that though also is now it's bringing light yeah. to the to the fact that you know gay people are in Trinidad. Right, <laughs> Some right. people are like, you know, the ignorance. Oh, from Trinidad. In a way, you can't be gay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm that, pretty sure yeah, you that, probably heard that yeah, all the time. You know, yeah, all the time, all the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just like, oh my gosh, Jamaicans are gay. Yeah. And that's what my dad. My that's, that was the issue. With my dad. My dad did not want to be seen or to have or people to know that he has a son who was gay. Okay. And to be that type of dude. So mm-hmm. when I went back to New York and I became who I like, I actually grew into who I was. Mm-hmm he started to kind of realize, you know, my son is not the type that I thought mm-hmm. he was. He's still a man. He thought you was about to be out here wearing yeah, wigs like, and shit. Yeah, like, 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 bitch, yes. Yeah, no, nah, I'm not doing all that. That's not <laughs> happening. Like, that's that's just not me. I'm, I'm a man. Then they, I know how I was born. I mm-hmm. know what I was born as. And mm-hmm. I don't knock my for what they do. You know, if mm-hmm. that's what you feel, do that. But me, I know I can't see myself. I, I can't see myself in the mirror that way. Yeah. I would like... What are you doing? Like, why? <laughs> this wouldn't work. Yeah. And you know saying, I love that you actually went through that phase where you felt like you had to do that yeah. in order to, because, like I said, like, it's the stigma that's placed on right. gay men. Like, this is what a gay man is. Right. And I feel like there are other gay men out there that are like you yes. that are, you know what I'm saying, not effeminate in that way. And they probably went through the same struggle or are still going through that struggle where mm-hmm. it's like, should, do I have to do this? I'm not comfortable doing this. Right. Do I have to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. As far as that whole thing goes, do you feel offended when people are like, yes, bitch, and things like that in reference to I you? I mean, I have one friend who does it nonstop. <laughs> I think that's just her, though. She's okay. very, she's a very animated person. But at the same token, like, I don't I don't get offended by it, mm-hmm. but I let people know, you know, like, it's cool every now and then, but don't get too caught yeah. up in doing that, because that's not who I am. That's not how I operate. I might play with you, yeah. but... Don't walk around here to my girl this girl that. <laughs> no, I'm a man. <laughs> and dress okay. me as such. Do how are you in your parents' relationship now? We're good. We're real good now. Um, based on compared to what we were before. Mm-hmm. Me, like I guess me and my son were always good. She didn't care. Mm-hmm. She was like, you know, you're my son, I don't care. Um, my pops, we had our issues, we overcame that. We're okay. good now. Like we can 
definitely sit down and we're good. Okay. No issues. Okay. So you guys are on like a level playing field, basically. Yeah. We, we don't part. we don't bring it up. We don't talk about it. It's one of those uh, you know type of things. things. Yeah. Like I I even I was like we had a party at the house one day and I wanted to um bring somebody I was talking to mm-hmm. and my stepmom was like, I was like so I can bring I can bring X Y Z and it was like my stepmom looked at me and she didn't say anything. Mm-hmm. So I was like so you gonna answer me like what's good. And she didn't say anything still. My sister had to work. I was like, you know, you might want to answer him because, you know, you can make him feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So she eventually answered me, but I think she had to think about it for a second because she just never, I mean, she met my ex, mm-hmm. but it wasn't to the point where he came to the house. I was already okay. living with him. So oh, they had okay. no choice. Okay. This person was somebody different, mm-hmm. a whole new state, whole new world. So. Okay. I was going to ask you if they've ever met anyone that you were dating. They have. They they liked one of them. Okay. They didn't know we were dating at the time, though. I was going to ask <laughs> you that. I was going <laughs> to say, have you brought anyone home under the pretense of being a friend that you were actually involved in? I brought, in? well, okay, so let, let's, <laughs> I brought people home at night mm-hmm. that they didn't know about, mm-hmm. but that was sneak tip. Okay. And then I brought people home that they just ended up meeting eventually. Okay. And... Like, hey, this is my friend type yeah, of thing? Yeah, I brought my as a friend. This is my friend. But okay. at the end of the day, I think they still knew who that mm-hmm. person was to me. They just, I, it wasn't addressed in that matter. Yeah, because, you know, it's crazy because I met one of my friends. Like, we're literally platonic friends, but she's a lesbian. I right. met her parents. But because they knew that she's a lesbian, right. I felt like this tension. And yeah. I was like, bitch, I'm not fucking you. Yeah, like, what is yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. And that's why I don't you like to tell them anything because I know how they're going to keep looking mm-hmm. at me. And yeah. my sister, I mean, my sister's good with, cool with it also, but I feel like even at, at that, I don't know, it's just one of those things where you don't really bring it up. You don't really bring it up to them or bring it around them. Are you religious? Mm-mm. Is your family religious? I think all black people pretend to be religious. Oh, say that. <laughs> and they go off of this stigma of I was raised in church and mm-hmm. you should be this way, you should be that way. Now I have a I have a cousin, my stepmom's, you know, um, niece. Mm-hmm. She called me one day and she was like, "Yo, you know, um, you should come to church with me and let's do this, 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 um, what was it? Some kind of like phone call where you like have church over the phone. Uh-huh. It's like a prayer line. Okay. And I listen. Why do you want me to do? It? And she said, "Well, you know, there's a passage in the in the Bible that says if you're living life this way, when God comes back, He's gonna He's gonna leave you here, and you'll be abomination, and you're gonna live, you're gonna die, you can't die. Well, you're gonna live straight through hell, pretty much. You just you're living here while everybody's awake in heaven or wherever it is you go, mm-hmm. and God's so gonna you're leave purgatory, you here. Basically, yeah, He'll wow. leave you here, make you suffer because of you being gay." But she didn't say that, but that's basically what she was saying. Like, she said those words, but she didn't say because I'm gay. She just said because of what you're doing. Oh, wow. So I was like, all right. I mean, and it, and then that's to my stepmom. I was like, yo, so you know, have you, do you know about this past? She's like, yeah, it's, it's true. <laughs> do, do they have like the scripture? I need to know where it says this. I can get it for you. Okay, please. I'll get it for you. Because, oh, it's in Revelations? Yes. Oh, yes, okay. that's what it was. Huh. Yeah. Like specifically, it, it says it says if you're gay or if you're if you're not living life as you should, something like that, that she will be the rapture. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. And she felt like she had to pass this word on to and you, and you make, had to. Yeah, I had to go to church with her, and she gave me this whole spiel about how I'm doing things the wrong way, and God is not happy with me. And I said, well, if God wasn't happy, with me, I wouldn't have the, all the blessings I have right now. Say that. Because I've gone through it all. You know, like I I've been through some shit, and you can't tell me that. Because People of me, blow me, you know what I mean? It, it's just it's 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 nonsense. It's it's complete ignorance, mm-hmm. nonsense. And I don't, I didn't let it. Bo- I, it bothered me when she said it, mm-hmm. but I was drunk, so I didn't really care. <laughs> Next one, I woke up and I was like, "Oh, that happened!" Like I forgot about it. <laughs> it's like but, really, sis? That's yeah. really what happened? Yeah. But wow. My, so so they are religious, I guess, in a sense. Okay. To answer your question. Okay. Did you did you grow up in church? I went to private school in my life. Okay. So I was raised around the Bible mm-hmm. and so forth. And but I was never baptized. Okay. My mom wasn't the type to make me go to church. My grandmother, mm-hmm. you know, she's from Alabama. So okay. she has that old school mentality mm-hmm. of church every Sunday. Mm-hmm. Clean shoes, clean pants, mm-hmm. clean socks. Mm-hmm. But um me going to private school and going to church every day and having this long mass on Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. It makes you feel like you are part of a cult. Mm-hmm. You have to wear uniforms. You have to live your life this way. You live mm-hmm. that way. In all reality, when you when you grow up in New York, the only reason why your parents put you in private school is because they don't want you in public school. Mm-hmm. 
public school is hell. I went to public school in Brooklyn, so right. I know. It's hell. So it basically, when you go to private school, it means you got money. Mm-hmm. Your parents are showing off their money. Mm-hmm. You're going to a good school. You, you have like 15 kids in your classroom, mm-hmm. and you're getting good food at lunch. Yeah. That's all it is. Not that nasty pizza. Yeah. It's, it's not even about the religion. Like, to be yeah. honest, none of the kids were paying attention in chapel. Uh-huh. We were in there playing, throwing... We were just have, acting up. Being kids. Yeah. yeah. It, private school is basically just for the kids who know what they have, whose parents have money, mm-hmm. and to show it off. Okay. Did... What are your views as far as religion and Christianity and the Bible and such goes? <sighs> I believe there is a higher power. Okay. I do believe that there is this power that makes everything go around. Mm-hmm. But I don't believe the Bible. Okay. I feel like... Someone sat on their couch one day and made this all this shit up <laughs> because they wanted to feel like we need to live by something. Okay. Because you can't tell me that you're created by this God uh-huh. and he made you gay. Mm-hmm. We're born this way. It's not mm-hmm. something you just, it's not a hobby. It's not something we, where we just see overnight, oh my God, I want to be gay. Mm-hmm. Although there are those who out there that do that. Yeah. But me, I know I've been gay since day one. Okay. I came out the pussy gay. <laughs> Just simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> simple as that. Uh-huh. So I don't believe everything that the Bible says. Maybe some things are true, mm-hmm. but I, I I believe it's more so science okay. than anything else. Okay. We're going to touch back on you coming out the pussy gay. But uh, <laughs> as far as that goes, have you always felt this way about religion or is it something that you developed over time? I think I developed it. I developed it over time. Do you think that came with acknowledging and accepting that you're gay or was this before? I that? think it, I think it came with accepting who I am, mm-hmm. not even being gay, mm-hmm. but as a human being mm-hmm. and just being a black man on oh. top of that. Because, mm-hmm. again, God created black people, but we're still hated. Mm-hmm. And then but why would he create these people and you hate them so mm-hmm. much if you're such a Christian? Yeah. Yeah. Like, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So I, it kind of, like, there's been times I get drunk as shit and I just start thinking. Like, <laughs> my weed is my liquor. Uh-huh. And I just Same, sit back and I, I start smoke, thinking. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I sip, I'm like, yo, you serious? And you put things in perspective after a while. Yeah. Okay. So, touching back on that, when did you actually, like, realistically <laughs> realize that you might be interested in boys or. <laughs> <laughs> so, when I was a little boy, I, um, I used to be on the block playing wrestling and all that. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't the kid to play with action figures and all that. I wanted to, like, be outside playing. Okay. But even then, like, there were kids on the block that would, like, watch WWF and Mm -hmm. WWE. Oh, that was me. I didn't watch that. (laughs) I didn't watch. But, and they were like, oh, let's play this game. And I'll play it with them. But I'm only playing so I can fill up on them. Oh, okay. I was a fast-ass little boy. (laughs) So I I, I don't think I, I don't think I, I I don't think I can answer a question as to when I acknowledged it. But I I knew Okay, I so, always liked boys. Okay, so this is around what age? Like eight, nine, somewhere around there. Before that. Okay. All like right. five, six. Okay. Because I ask this because most people that I speak to, they give me ages like around four and things yeah. like that as yeah. far as, you know, when they first realize that yeah. anything. You know what I'm saying? So I just like to get a general idea because people love to say, oh, you just woke up this way. You, nah. you choose. This is a nah. choice that you're making. I you're wish. A- I Thank wish it was you. a choice I could make because I wouldn't have done it. Thank you. And I don't understand why people don't get that because my argument for that is always, why would you choose to be something to that be is hated. so hated? Exactly. Like, people don't realize the statistics. Like, they're not looking for it, but the amount of gay people that, first of all, commit suicide because they're yeah, gay, yeah. then there's this... St- people get beat up, people yeah. get killed, yeah. like, just for no other reason than... you think than- I want to live my life like that on edge? Like, oh my God, I'm going to die today? Listen, like... <laughs> like, why would anyone choose that? Like, Another reason why I am glad that I found myself. I'm not that flamboyant mm-hmm. man. I live in I live in Houston now, mm-hmm. and Houston has this this sense of ignorance and backwardsness where they don't understand people. It's Texas, yeah, it's Texas. <laughs> it's they Texas. they don't understand you. So you walking around like this, they're like, "What the hell is going on?" Mm-hmm. Me coming from New York, it's a whole new world. It's yeah. two different worlds. I could imagine. So it's like you either do this, or you do that. Uh-huh. It's not. There's no in between with it. Okay. How is the gay population in Houston? You found any clubs? Or they only have one club. Whoa. In Houston, rather. There's only one club. I can't remember what it's called. 
but it's only one and they all go to this club oh. like and the thing about it is like you can go to miami new york there's yeah. different gay bars yeah yeah that's they what only I'm have one gay bar Ew. So, so everyone's in this one hot box those like white people <laughs> um well i think I, yeah, there's there's caucasians in there yeah, yeah but the caucasians out there are so different they're like country donkey oh god it's texas it's texas and, it's texas cowboy yeah, hats yeah and, yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's different <laughs> but i think they have different nights okay like saturday night i believe is like hip-hop oh, okay so you okay. got that but okay so it's one club but different different nights they have. yeah okay. i think it's a straight club also but saturday oh. night is the gay night okay huh all right <laughs> um do you want children i do um i think i want two but the way I do it is me and my partner will have our own kids. Mm -hmm. So basically, I would have a child that looks like me, mm -hmm. and then he'll have a child that looks like him, okay. and we'll just kind of combine that family. Okay. How do you feel about adoption? I would do it. Okay. I don't want no grown-ass child, though. Okay. But you would want, like, a biological child. Yeah, like, I prefer a you. biological child. Okay. Yeah. I, I just, okay. I, again, I don't want to fit into the stigma of gay people having to adopt children. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going away to India to adopt some child that has two fingers <laughs> and one eye. I'm not doing that. <laughs> it's fake yeah i feel you i feel you because i'm asking because you know like there's always like i know people who are gay that don't want children also right. so it's like you know the world we live in is trash it is yeah. <laughs> so you know there's also that whole concept of the struggles you've gone through like you said you've right. been through some shit right. and you know what i'm saying the stigma of you know <laughs> there's that ignorance of gay people raising children they're gonna turn out gay right, too right, right. Which I think is funny because it's, that's ignorance. Also, straight people raise gay people, right? <laughs> exactly. So how is it gonna make that? Yeah, it, it, het, heterosexuals We're, can be very dumb. Yes, they can be very dumb. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's sad how dumb they can be, and not to think like sit back and think about the shit you just said. Like mm -hmm. just, just, just run it through your mind one more time. Yeah, I mean it's people have mouths so they talk but that's uh, the problem <laughs> that's the problem um okay so backtracking a bit considering that you're a bottom mm -hmm. okay as far as sex is concerned how are you in reference to receiving pleasure well if the sex is good i don't i don't jack off or anything like that during sex okay. i don't have to mm -hmm. um if it's good it's gonna just happen okay and a lot of men i've realized that there's something there's something new it's not new but it's um it's it's different okay most men have to jack off or do something in order to get their pleasure okay. i think me i'm really into being gay i love men <laughs> so i don't have to do that okay like it's just okay there all right um <clears throat> oh, excuse me so you're a strict bottom like strict you're not bottom. switching nothing Hell like no. that's <laughs> No, no. I'm asking because I remember one time you said that your penis is just for decoration. Decoration. It's decoration. <laughs> it's an ornament. Oh my god. <laughs> On this Christmas tree. <laughs> you say. I mean, I'm asking these questions because, like, of course, I mean, the podcast is for LGBT Caribbeans, right. but I know that other people are going to end up listening. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's for informational purposes, entertainment, all of this. Yeah. So, I'm asking these ridiculous questions. <laughs> I know better, but there are people who don't. Who don't know, yeah. So, you no, like, I good. have to ask these questions. You're good. You're good. Because um, there's also a, a topic that I've, I personally wasn't aware of. Which do is? you use toys? I don't like toys. They okay. don't do anything for me. Um, I've been in contact with people who like it. Okay. I just feel like... It, if you have to use a toy, mm -hmm. you're not doing your job. But I meant like on your own though. Like oh you know, no no people... no, I don't okay. I don't see reason to do that. Like it's just I, I want flesh. I want I okay. want warmth. <laughs> warmth. Warmth. Okay. See. All right. That is a topic because my producer. <laughs> no, because we always go back and forth about like sex toys and stuff. Right. Because I'm always like people use sex toys and you know it's whatever. But warmth. That's a good point as to warmth. why people would not use a sex yeah. toy. Don't look at me like. <laughs> <laughs> because no because we always go back he's always because i talk about fleshlights like men using fleshlights right, to it's, masturbate it's, yeah. that was a very good point i never looked at it from that standpoint uh -huh. thank you thank you I warmth, warmth. <laughs> I need body heat <laughs> <laughs> that's real though you say that's real yeah. okay as far as um being out and mm -hmm. being comfortable with yourself mm -hmm. are you okay with pda like are you affectionate person yeah, um so with me Growing up in New York, I, it, there's a time and place for everything. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm not going to just be in the street holding your hand and kissing up on you, hugging up on you. Like, you have to know your surroundings. Mm -hmm. Because although I'm from New York and New York is very diverse, mm -hmm. it's open to everything, 
there's certain parts of New York I would not do it in. Okay. There are certain parts of Miami I wouldn't do it in, and I damn sure wouldn't mm. do it in Houston. Yeah. Like I, to be honest, I have not seen not one gay couple together in Houston together in per in, in 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 public. How long have you been there? I've been there since Harvey. I got there two weeks prior to Harvey. Oh wow. So August. Wow. So about what seven months, eight months. And you've never seen. I have never seen anyone people out in public. Does that scare you? It does, and that's. I think that's why I don't really. I'm, I'm not falling in place. Like I, I feel like I should okay. be. I feel like I've, I've met people who I'm cool with mm-hmm. and so forth, but I feel like they're playing. They, every basically everything in in Houston is based on being DL. And I feel like I'm backtracking because <laughs> I've done a DL thing here in Miami when I was a teenager. Was, I'm not a grown ass man. That. I'm not doing DL anymore. Like jumping out of windows, hiding in bushes. Okay. No, fuck that. For those who don't know, DL is down low. <laughs> men, gay men that are in the closet living alternate lives. Because I was going to ask you about yeah. trades also. Yeah. That was going to be my next thing. Yeah. Because, okay. And I feel like it's usually younger gay men that mm-hmm. end up in those involvements mm-hmm. with, in you know, DM. Oh, man. In Houston, the grown men that are adults and have oh. lived their lives. I don't know how you can live your life under wrap for so long and you're pushing 40. You're pushing 30. Society, family, ignorance. And that's fine, but that means you're going to eventually lose your mind. Yeah. You're not being who you want. You can't even... I have a friend who mm-hmm. just came out to his family. Mm-hmm. And I'm so glad he did because mm-hmm. he was, he's Jamaican. Oh, he was going through that. Baby. <laughs> he was losing his mind. And I felt so bad. I, like, I want to help him so much, mm-hmm. but I don't know what to do. So I would like encourage him to come out. And I think he was more concerned about how his family feel. About so he him. was grown living on his own and everything. And yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he, but he's, he's family oriented. Yeah. I feel so that. he, he didn't want to, you know, lose that. Mm-hmm that connection with his family but at the end of the day you have to make yourself happy yeah and he eventually came out recently and okay. everything's good as i told him <laughs> that's it would crazy be. that's crazy so i'm glad that he's in a place now but i see what he goes to as a dl mm-hmm. man and or at when he was dl mm-hmm. i don't want to be part of that i don't want to deal with that stress yeah. i can't that I, sounds like stress stress i can't i can't be a mentor for anything i'm going to be dealing with. i'm going to be dating you mm-hmm. you need to be open yeah and it's crazy because I, I'm always talking about being in a place financially stable on your own before you come right. out. And you just brought up a very good point. Like, even beyond that, people are afraid to lose their families, their friends, right. anything that they're close to or familiar with because of the ignorance that people have mm-hmm. towards people being gay. Mm-hmm. So it's like you come out and you're self-sufficient. Yeah. Successful, even and that's whatever why I, the that, case that's is. what it was. He was he's successful. <sighs> he he's listen successful. He he's good. But I guess I misquote. He he's he's Jamaican and Guyanese. Okay, so he's on both ends. Mm-hmm. But when you're successful and you can take care of yourself, mm-hmm. why do you care? Exactly, and that's me being the type of person that I am because yeah. I'm like fuck it. Either you're with me or you're not. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. me. But I know people that are like, oh my gosh, but I've no. I'm a loner at the end of the day. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I'm a loner. I'm a crab. Like, I am antisocial. I mean, granted, I love to have my certain few around yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, my thing is, you're not about to try me. You're not about to try <laughs> me. Like, you're not. Like, I'm not confrontational at all, right. but don't but disrespect don't try. me. Exactly. That's it. And that's the main thing they want. They want to they want to, they want to push your button and see how mm-hmm. far you'll go. Mm-hmm. Especially men. Mm-hmm. Men try lesbians and they'll try gay men. Yeah. Because they feel like, oh, you're gay, you can't fight. Nigga, I will rock uh-huh. your fucking jaw. <laughs> For real though, I and I've been telling people, I've been telling people because I've been to the cl- uh, um, cloud nine. Yeah. And I've seen them boys out there fucking niggas yeah. up because you thought you, you can play yeah. somebody. Don't no, do that. don't do that. <laughs> like I tell people all day, do not try to fight don't no gay that. boys. Like don't gay boys will fuck you <laughs> up. Like <laughs> don't try it. Don't get crazy. You know what I'm saying? Don't get so crazy. that's that's one of my things. Like don't try it. But on that topic though, like I talk about you, know what I'm saying the safety of coming out, having people mm. that support you, things mm. of that nature, and that's all good and well, but. Being family oriented, like you said, your friend is, mm-hmm. and you know, a lot of Caribbean people are family oriented right. at the end of the day. Right. That's one of the things that we also struggle with with coming out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, being adults, living on your own, all of that is good and nice. You're successful, whatever. But at the end of the day, there's always that stigma for some reason that 
do, what if you want children? Yeah. Like, what, you know yeah. what I'm saying? There's that. And then what are you going to teach your children? You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to be a regular person in society. And exactly. you choose to do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. You be gay, straight, bisexual, what transgender. Whatever you choose to do is your is what you choose to do. But mm-hmm. I'm going to raise you as my child. And to have the, the upbringing mm-hmm. that's not... That you're open-minded. Mm-hmm. You will never shut someone out because mm-hmm. of what they believe or what they feel yeah and you know being bisexual like i've always like for the longest time been like i can see myself marrying a woman before mm-hmm. i can see myself marrying a man like yeah. that's always been me yeah. and just because i feel like well now it's kind of taboo a little bit but gay people have fought so hard for gay marriage yeah. and all these things and i feel like the title of marriage and everything that comes with it is more upheld because we had to go through so much to get it right. you know what i'm saying right. so it's like i feel like it'll be more sacred in that concept yeah but that, you know what i'm saying that's yeah, yeah, yeah. that was my thinking yeah, growing yeah. up you know so now i'm just like whatever if you make me happy you make me happy exactly but right. if i feel like i've always felt like you know having a child with a woman and raising them my mindset would be that as long as you're loved and you're taken that's care of is. and you're not doing anything to harm anyone, mm-hmm. if your feelings get hurt, your feelings get hurt. Right. That's you know what I'm you. saying? But you're not causing any physical harm or right. anything like that to someone. Live your life. Live you your know what I'm saying? Just Live be, your life. Yep. be, and that's my thing with religion also because mm-hmm. I'm not a very religious person. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I believe somebody made this happen somehow, right. some way, whatever. But at the end of the day, these guidelines that you're giving people to live by, are you upholding all of them? Are you just pinpointing the things that you don't like and saying you shouldn't do this because that's in the book? But see, I want to, I want to, I guess, I want to get on the topic of what you just said with guidelines. Mm-hmm. Life doesn't have guidelines. Mm. So who are you to tell me what I can and cannot do mm-hmm. and who to do it with? Mm-hmm. I just feel like straight people need to get out of gay people's bedrooms. Yeah. Mind your fucking business. Yeah. Because... Your sex After- is boring and I can't help that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but you're saying I saw... After the whole Trinidad and Tobago mm. passing the law and everything, I saw so many ignorant tweets. Yeah. After that, and I was just like, "Why do you care what these people do in their bedrooms? Yeah. Yeah. Why do you care?" Because they feel like they're in charge of someone. Just mind your damn business. Do mm. your own thing with you with your wife, and that's it. Or half whoever. them single. They even got that's nobody. What so what are you doing? Or whoever you said, I just. I think you know. I I feel like people are jealous of what we have mm-hmm. because when you think about it, most people in the gay community have come so far Mm -hmm. and they are doing so well Mm -hmm. so much better than a heterosexual man or woman Mm -hmm. and we come out especially gay men we come out to be listen i always say i need to find me a gay man because y'all be having money and i need to figure out we we, we got we got makeup jobs we Mm -hmm. have hair jobs Mm -hmm. we have everything designing these people that are in in fashion and on yes. TV and reality TV, most of the designers and their makeup Stylists artists are gay. Yeah. But you're the main ones talking about, I don't like this, I don't like mm-hmm. that. But you love how we fixed your face up, yeah. right? You ugly bitch. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's a very good point because a lot of people that are into fashion and into all of this, these yeah. stylists, a lot of them are gay. And a lot Versace of them... was gay. <laughs> but they yes. rocking his shit though. Like hell. Like hell, you know what I'm saying? So it's people have selective hatred. It's it's ridiculous, you know what I'm saying? But my thing is <sighs> being Caribbean, right? Like I said before, it it's everything to me. Yeah. Like I was yeah. I was born in Jamaica and I love Jamaica down. Like you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you can't tell it's me nothing place. about it's Jamaica. Exactly, yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying? That's home for me. And being queer, or whatever, I I want there to be a day when I can actually go to Jamaica and be 100% like, right. listen, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I love that there are people there trying to make steps to that. Mm-hmm. And you know what I'm saying? I'm seeing other islands doing their Trinidad and everything else. And like I said on a previous episode, like there are other organizations in other countries too. Like yeah. Guyana has one right. and I'm, I feel like I saw something about Barbados, but don't quote me on that one. Right, I'm not 100% right. sure. But they have like little events and parties and things like that. But I'm still kind of like, I don't know about going to these events. See, 
I, I don't I don't know. I can't speak on Trinidad and what it goes through, but mm-hmm. based on what my, my family tells me, mm-hmm. going out there, you can't go out there with jewelry on. You can't go mm-hmm. out there looking too yeah, flashy. Parts of you gotta be too, very, Jamaica. you know, low key bummish like. Mm-hmm. So I feel like me going to Trinidad and me being who I am, mm-hmm. I wear my shit. <laughs> I wear I'm my looking shit. At you here blinking, I'm I like... wear my shit. And not only that, but even being a gay man, like mm-hmm. it's dangerous out there. Yeah. And if that is dangerous, whether you're straight, mm-hmm. gay, bi, whatever it is. Because I want to go to Carnival. My friend is like, we're not going. They kill that kidnapping and yeah. killing people in Trinidad. It's <laughs> dangerous. Like, I'm not trying. I, I, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for whatever they may have mm-hmm. and what they may do. But me personally, I would never go out there and masquerade yeah. being a gay man. Mm-hmm. No, I'm going to be a man. Mm-hmm. And if you find out, hopefully you don't kill me. But. <laughs> I'm, it's yeah. just I'm not about to be out here doing things okay. that are just extra in another mm-hmm. country. Yeah, because at the, and that's my thing too. Like I was born in Jamaica, but I haven't lived in Jamaica right. in a long time, so right. I'm not as familiar with right. Jamaica. It's not it's home, but it's not my everyday surroundings. Right. So you don't you know, know what's exactly, and they don't know me. Yeah, so it's I'm a, I'm on tour, as mm-hmm. they like to say. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like it's. I'm an outsider right. at the end of the day because I've had people come up to me and be like, "Oh, you um, no, go suck your mama. I'm, I yes, I'm come from. Don't don't do it, okay? Like, <laughs> Bill, <laughs> like, no. Yes, I look clean and yeah, you know, say I'm yeah, dressed yeah. or whatever, but don't 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 come. Yeah, <laughs> no, don't, son. Yeah, no. And that's the thing. Like, I I, oh, I just don't. I don't. I don't. I don't see myself being out there doing the most. Like, if they was to come out with like some gay juve all of a sudden mm-hmm. and Jaden I'm not going. <laughs> That's like, you, a, that's like a setup. Yeah, I feel like that too sometimes. It's ignorant, but I feel like setup. that too sometimes. Straight, feel- <laughs> blow that shit up. Like fire, everybody's on fire. <laughs> nah, I'm good. You know, it's crazy you say that. I don't know if you keep up, but Jamaica, they just had, um, they have gay pride in Jamaica. I've heard, I've seen it. They, they've had a couple of gay prides in Jamaica. Yes, yes. And I'm still in awe about that. <laughs> <laughs> like they've had a few, I've seen and them. you know what I'm saying. I had an interview with um, one of the guys from J Flag, and he was saying that you know they had a big rainbow flag out there wow. and everything. And I was like, like part of me wanted to cry. Like my first time going to Chutney Pride, I shed a tear. It was nice. I'm not gonna I lie, love it. I, I love shed it. a tear. I love you know it. what I'm saying? So I'm like. Maybe this could happen other places. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I like yeah. that it's, but I, I'm still like, mm, no. Yeah, <laughs> we had we had um, Gay Juve in Brooklyn one night. Okay, and it was nice. It was dope, but mm-hmm. I just feel like it was a setup for failure. Like this is where people are gonna realize that mm-hmm. we're gay yeah. and they're going to do something. Yeah. Not to mention the club they have in Brooklyn. There's, mm-hmm. a, there's, a, there's a club in Brooklyn called... Um, I don't think I've ever been to a party in Brooklyn. You tripping. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't party in there's Brooklyn. There's a club in Brooklyn. I can't think what it's called right now. It's called Langston's. Uh-huh. Langston's in Brooklyn. Like, you find real niggas in there. <laughs> like, dread niggas. Mm-hmm. And, but mm-hmm. the spot that it's in is so low-key, it looks like it's a little hole in the wall. Mm-hmm. You walk in, it's mm-hmm. huge. Not huge, but it's a cute size. Yeah. You feel me? But I just feel like that's opening up a door uh-huh. to kill you because they see you walking in the I was club. just about to say that. You see them coming in and you And know. people going to ask, what, what, what spot exactly. is that? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Nah. Mm-mm. All the parties I go to be in like Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> you got me fucked up. I be right. in the village. Right. Right. <laughs> and then you see with me, um, I don't only like men. Mm-hmm. I like transgender females to male. Okay. So if I'm seen with them in the street, mm-hmm. was like, was that what's happened to me? Huh. Did not know that. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. So now we got more questions. <laughs> um, as far as that goes. So transitioning females to male, mm. right? The gender doesn't matter to you. You guys are I'm with, well, not not genitalia, you guys. I should say. Yes, with me, I am attracted to masculinity. Okay. So as long as you're masculine, I love studs. I mm-hmm. love transgender female to male. Mm-hmm. I, I might even like a girl who's just real mm-hmm. masculine. Mm-hmm. That's just me. Okay, and. It's crazy because I've talked to people who have asked questions because we see couples like this online and I'm like, people are asking me questions like, right. oh, how he's straight then. And I'm like, you know, no, because they're in their mind. It's it, to us. Uh-huh. You're a man. Exactly. And people don't respect the T in right. between. Right. They, they see the before letter and that's, and that's it. it. And I, I had an interview with a trans man um, a couple weeks ago and we we're talking about, you know, being stealth and passing right. and things of that nature and how in his girlfriend is a lesbian quote was a lesbian yeah. is bisexual, <laughs> whatever the term is queer. And I always like 
me am, I, I like FTMs too, so I can't even say that. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? My thing is, people just have an issue with accepting people for who they are. You know what I'm That's saying? The and it's, and like I said before, people and it's always straight people it's in people's of genitalia. Business. It's always about the genitalia because it always comes back to, well, if they don't have a penis, how does that work for Shut you? Up. Strap me the fuck down. What's up? <laughs> Strap me all the fuck down. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? And the questions are crazy. Like, yeah. the, the questions are crazy because have you dated a trans man? Uh, yes. Okay. I have. Okay. And you guys have. It went as normal. It okay. was a normal procedure as if I was dealing with a man. Okay. Did they come out to you as trans prior to? Or? Um, they did. When we, I actually met him on a gay app that okay. we had, Jack. I Jacked. met him on there and I thought it was a man. And okay. we were talking and everything went well. And I was like, yo, call me. Mm-hmm. No, I'm sorry. He told me, well, yeah, he told me prior to us conversing on the phone. Mm-hmm. He mentioned, you know, I'm a, I'm a transgender and how okay. do you feel about it? I said, what does that mean to me? I don't care. Yeah. You're, you're a man. man. Yeah. <laughs> you're a man. You look like a man. Okay. You sound like a man. You look like it doesn't matter. You to carry me. yourself as yeah. such. And he was in the process of getting the whole um, surgery done. Okay. And, top know, surgery? Uh, top. I think he's getting bottom eventually. Oh, boy. <laughs> I, I have my fear of needles and uh, going under the knife, so I just be like, you know, say a prayer. Godspeed. <laughs> he, had, he has the, he had, listen, that nigga's falling in shit. Okay. <laughs> you got a beard and all that? He's growing it out. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> okay. You see, people, oh my gosh. that that's I like to hear things like that because yeah. I know... Like gay men that are strictly just, you mm-hmm. know, cisgendered men, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? And would you date someone before they started the posi- procedure? Yeah. Or would it be okay? So yeah. as long as they identify, as long as, as, they long as, 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 long as they're masculine. Okay. I don't care what you identify mm-hmm. as. I don't care if, if you're a stud transitioning. Mm-hmm. My thing is when you lay down next to this person, mm-hmm. it's what, what does it matter? Yeah. What does it matter? Like it, it's. It's someone that you know you love, mm-hmm. that you care for, that you want to mm-hmm. be with, or that you want to at least see yourself with in the future. Okay. You shouldn't. There should be no. There should be no barriers mm-hmm. blocking you from what you love. Okay. Do you feel like trans people should come out as trans to people they're dating? Definitely. At what point in the relationship? Um. Do you think they should do well, that? I mean, in that talking process, you know, okay. the getting to know each other. Okay. If you mention on the app, you know, you kind of fill them out, see okay. what their mindset is, and mm-hmm. then you, okay, I think I could tell them. Mm-hmm. But it should be, I think it should be, I know I could tell them. Okay. You know, you kind of make, you do probe questions, mm-hmm. and then you kind of realize, okay, this person might be who I could tell. Okay. But at the same token, there are still those people that are ignorant where mm-hmm. you tell them and they don't want to be with that. Mm-hmm. And I get that because everyone has their preference. Yeah. You know, everyone's not like me where they're mm-hmm. just like, okay, I'm open to it. Mm-hmm. But there are those like me that say, yo, fuck it. Mm-hmm. You guys dick is, that's what it is. Exactly. Um, do you feel like they should participate in one night stands? I don't see why not. I mean, why? I mean, do you the think they thing? should tell people before they have sex? I think so. Okay. Because that can cause an issue. That can cause them to get killed. Mm-hmm. And... I feel like, again, the ignorance of people, you know, mm-hmm. someone may be like, I'm going to meet up and you see them and they pull out this something out of their bag to mm-hmm. put it on their waist mm-hmm. and, or they pull out, let me tuck real quick. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's just yeah. different things that, you know, yeah. you have to let people be prepared to mentally mm-hmm. take in. Yeah. It's a mental thing. Mm-hmm. Because, that, yeah, yeah, because no matter how horny you are, mm-hmm. it that can always kill the mood. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because, yeah, because if you're not prepared for somebody to catch you off guard, it's like, wait That's a minute. That's way left field. Wait a minute. You about to like, tuck? You about even, to till out? Like, you no, know, you can't do that. Even if you're open to it, just not knowing, mm-hmm. it's just like something, take a step back, like, yeah. wait a minute, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I, I prefer that they tell me. I mean, if they didn't tell me, I'm going to still do it. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> but you know um, <laughs> I, just, I just feel like, you know, everyone should be able to be themselves and tell people who they really are. But at the same token, there are those who are still kind of scared. I think he was mm-hmm. scared to tell me. Yeah. He wasn't I sure. I understand that. Because I, didn't, I couldn't tell. Mm-hmm. I thought he was a man. But when he finally told me, I was like, oh, okay, cool. You. Yeah. That's what's up. Do you... There's this stereotype that lesbians are quick to get married while gay men are just out here just for the sex um okay so let me let me break it down for you i'm an old school gay (laughs) (laughs) um 
with us, when you're in a relationship for two years, mm-hmm. you're married. Mm-hmm. A year is the honeymoon stage, mm-hmm. that whole year. And that mm-hmm. second year, you're not married because we have a tendency to move people in with each other oh. after six months. Mm-hmm. Six months, oh, you bae. I love you so much. <laughs> Let's, Let's move together. second date. What you mean? Yeah, yeah like you mm-hmm. mine. Mm-hmm. So, I, but you know what? Times have changed since I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people now are just fucking. Mm-hmm. And that's fine, you know, but I think it's causing more of an issue with STDs being passed mm-hmm. around. And I don't think the gay culture, not everyone in the gay culture is looking to settle down. Mm-hmm. They're just looking to kind of get their nut and that's it. Yeah. Or have that go-to nigga. Yeah. Or that go-to chick, mm-hmm. whoever it may be. And that's just, not even just gay culture, that's all around, period. Yeah. Dating as a, in a university has changed. Mm-hmm. Everyone is looking for something just to get their nut. Yeah. Okay. So I don't believe in marriage anymore. I would do it, but I don't think everyone is on the same page. I feel that. So it's, yeah. So when you I find it, you cherish that. Yes. Okay. Um, I made a tweet earlier about being Caribbean and the term Bati Boy and mm-hmm. whatever. How do you feel about terms like that and faggot and things like that? I don't thing? care. I call niggas faggots. <laughs> <laughs> and... and when the, the, there's a song that that Chichi Man song mm-hmm. that was my favorite fucking song. <laughs> that was my shit. It's still my shit to yeah. this day. I hear it, I'm like, oh shit, that's my <laughs> shit. But I just feel like you know, I don't. I feel like they're labels, mm-hmm. and I don't fall into labels. Okay. You can call me what the fuck you want to call me, okay. but you're gonna respect me, mm-hmm. and you're gonna realize that it's not gonna hurt me. Mm-hmm. That it's just what you want to feel, what you say. Because at the same time, I'll still pull your bitch. Mm-hmm. What's up? Okay. <laughs> but see, <laughs> exactly. But my thing with that, though, like, I, the tweet was basically saying, you know, as a Caribbean, I know I have family and friends that mm-hmm. they'll come to me knowing that, you know, I'm gay and I'm right. like, nigga, respect gay people, equality, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And they would still use terms like bati boy or whatever. But it's not from a standpoint of maliciousness. It's not from, it's you know what I'm saying? Them it's just ignorance because yeah. they don't know better. They right. don't know any other term right. to call it. Because I read an article, that's what triggered a tweet where they were writing something and they put Batiman and it's B star star star, like asterisk asterisk. I know. Yeah, man. And it was a Caribbean thing. And I was yeah. just like, that's really like, it's technically a slur. Like yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. It's technically a slur. And the people that I know who use these terms, they're not using it to be offensive. It's just all they know because Caribbean people aren't using homosexual. They're not saying no. gay. They're not, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? See, when I, when I use the term fag or mm-hmm. faggot, it's in terms, because with me, I feel like there are gays who are faggots. And mm-hmm. to me, a faggot is somebody who just does real bird shit. <laughs> you a real fucking ghetto bird bitch. Mm-hmm. You just do malicious things because you're gay okay <laughs> I, I, I don't i mean i don't put the sense of being gay a faggot mm-hmm. i feel as if you know it is a derogatory term as i feel calling a lesbian a butch dyke mm-hmm. that i hate that i've <laughs> I always hate hated dyke. that i hate the term butch. i hate dyke <laughs> but at the same time i, I i've it's been popping known, now though yeah apparently. i've been known to call guys faggot just because they've done malicious mm-hmm. things like you're just being a faggot for mm-hmm. no reason but at the same time it's like you if someone was to call me that i wouldn't get offended by it okay it's just like i don't i don't let people get to me i guess okay. i have this this wall up like i don't care do what you want to do okay. what you want to say but you can't beat me so i'm not a- <laughs> <laughs> okay all right yeah because you know i'm i like to respect people in their yeah, spaces yeah, yeah. and boundaries nah, it, and things like that yeah i do too as, i feel like this is labels yeah and like i said earlier um people like dyke is running out like they all all over Twitter. I don't know if you're on Twitter, but I just I like I just term. see dyke, dyke, dyke. And I'm just like, oh stop. I hate, I hate <laughs> like I use it here and there in the context because of, you know so, what yeah, I'm saying? The, yeah, yeah. But at the same time it's like, okay, and it's like nigga, they're trying to take back yeah. the negativity that comes with it. Yeah. And the same thing with faggot, because I've been hearing that a lot. I know yeah, yeah, yeah. gay boys say faggot, like, and I'm just like, all right, whatever. Right. You know what I'm saying? But people outside of that, you I'm can't just do like, that. it's exactly. like it's like a nigga word. You mm-hmm. blacks can say it, but mm-hmm. you can't say it. Exactly. And <sighs> I think as, as long as you're under the umbrella, the LGBT, right. like lesbians can say faggot, and it'll be like, all right, Dyke, chill. You cute. You cute. Yeah, you cute. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like kind of one of those things, but at the same time, it's kind of like. Mm, 
Not yeah, really. watch your mouth. Yeah. And get smacked. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, all right. You know. Yeah, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot to it. You know? <laughs> it is just a matter how. And, and it's also based on, on the text that you use. Exactly. Now. Context is very important because, like I said, with the Batty Boy thing, like, yeah. you can easily be like, yeah, man, Batty Boy along the street, da 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 da. Yeah, yeah. And it's not saying, like, oh my gosh, this he's Batty gay. Boy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's just, you know what I'm saying? It's just, he's a gay man that lives down the street. Right. And that's that. Right. And then they could be done in an offensive but way. But everyone doesn't know how to take that. Exactly. Exactly. Especially coming from a West Indian standpoint, mm-hmm. and you're American, you're like, oh, he called me this. Exactly. And that's that, that was my point of the tweet, because mm-hmm. I'm like, as a Caribbean, it's not necessarily offensive in yeah. all aspects of the term. Right. It's just... Some of them just just don't just right. don't know better. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I was talking about this earlier because I was saying the whole gay thing. They got gay in their name, pizza gay, comma gay. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so it's kind of like yeah. my Instagram you know, has gay all over it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like I'm searching. <laughs> it's funny you say that because I'm searching like gay people on um, on Instagram to follow, yeah. and I put gay, and I'm just like, oh, these fucking Jamaicans. <laughs> I was like, this is Christ. I was like, none of these people are gay. It's just their name. Mm-hmm. But you know, whatever. Happens. <laughs> yeah. Happens. I want to thank you for coming. You're welcome. Thank I you. actually Thanks for having. I appreciate you coming. You, you know, you're having. my first no, yeah, second my male guest, but my se- first male <laughs> interview, like <laughs> on the topic personally, anyways. And you know what I'm saying? Do you have any questions for me? Do anything you want to say to the people listening? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I want to give a shout out to my best friend is her wedding week week in Miami Ew. turning up for her bachelorette party Ariel you know I love you girl <laughs> <laughs> y'all about to go finish getting lit I'm getting lit I'm getting lit all week and got my head right now guzzle, seriously guzzle, guzzle. you really are drinking this shit like, <laughs> <laughs> this bottle was full when you came in here <laughs> Bro, I tried once upon an hour barker check our pictures out we all on Instagram lit um, okay, so we're going to wrap this up. Um, please don't forget to follow us on all the social media things. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pointless Talks. We're on SoundCloud, Apple Music, Facebook, Pointless Talks Podcast. Um, if you like us, rate us, keep your bad mind comments to yourself. And, you know, whether you got here on purpose or by fate, <laughs> thank you for tuning in. Later.